For Crema Media's engineering news, I'm Mamaili Mamaila. Joining me today is the international steel fabricator CEO, Niels van Niekerk, to discuss the steel fabrication sector. Thank you for joining us, Niels. Good morning, Mamaili. The local steel industry holds much potential, which is yet to be fully exploited because of economic related factors. From a steel fabrication point of view, what overall impact has this had on local companies? Uh, the demand for steel products is actually totally dependent on the uh, level of economic activity in a country. Mm. So when the uh, economies contract, the steel industries contract, and when they, uh, the economies expand, then the steel industries expand. Now, South Africa is no uh, exception to that. And because we've seen the low level of economic activity in South Africa, uh, the currently the steel industry uh, has contracted, and we've seen, therefore, uh, people exiting the industry, uh, low levels of activity, etc. Mm. However, those uh, companies that develop their export uh, uh, markets over the years, they are continuing and we're still seeing good 15,000 tons of fabricated structural steel per month leaving the borders of South Africa. Mm. Another factor is that the civil construction industry and the built uh, environment professions industries have also gone through major changes in the past five years. And there's n new entrants, the new owners, uh, some exited the, the industry. Now, they have always been uh, leading the uh, South African export, SA Inc., as we typically call it. Mm. So we are busy re-establishing our links with, uh, with those industries as well. Mm. So with cheap Asian imports putting the industry under pressure, it is now more important than ever for local companies to consider exporting. Since this is your mandate as an export council, could you please expand on the value that you are able to add for your members? The value addition that companies look at when they look at our membership in difficult times like now is actually in terms of rents. And if the expectation is not that they will gain more on the bottom line by belonging to the ISF mm -hmm. than what it's going to cost them to belong to the ISF, then they will simply not belong, full stop. Mm. In difficult times like now, uh, everyone must rethink their objectives and strategies. And industry associations and export councils are no different to that. In fact, the ISF had to really think uh, hard and critically uh, 18 months ago on how we see the future. And the uh, resultant is, is a very simple objective. Uh, and the object of the ISF is simply to maintain and grow the exports of our members. Mm -hmm. The implementation of this object has actually seen uh, quite a growth in our numbers over the past few months. Mm -hmm. The ISF modus operandi is very well known. We work by direct interaction with the project owners and the engineering houses wherever they are located, mm -hmm. with a focus, specific focus on the projects with it within Africa. This ensures that the capabilities and capacities of our members are well known by these companies. Mm -hmm. What is new, we also now call on companies inside South Africa with projects outside the borders of South Africa. Mm -hmm. Also calling on companies inside of South Africa where the projects will be procured from outside South Africa. And then thirdly, uh, recently the, the bulk of the pressured equipment manufacturers also joined the ISF. So we've, uh, we are now involved in marketing their abilities, firstly to the mining industries and then secondly to the Mozambique LNG industries. Mm. Uh, on the input side, we are, uh, are again interacting with the steel mills and steel merchants mm -hmm. like a decade ago on input steel pricing, project pricing. Uh, we stopped that about a decade ago because of unfounded fears of competition commission uh, interactions. A lot of your member companies are currently heavily involved in pitching for the Mozambique LNG projects. Do you think that South African companies in general understand the importance of the magnitude of those projects and the massive potential that they hold for their growth? Yes, I think most do, but they don't know how to go about getting a share of this pie. Literally thousands of trips have been done by individual companies from South Africa to Mozambique over the past few years. Now the, the problem is that the procurement orders are not going to be issued from Mozambique. It is important to visit Mozambique. You, you've got to be able to talk the LNG talk and you've got to understand the geographical uh, situation and specifics of Mozambique. However, the purchase orders are not, will not be placed from there. So therefore, you've got to travel to Houston, 
Paris, Milan, Yokohama, Busan, etc. If you would like to get part of the orders. Mm. Now this is too expensive for the average individual company. Uh, the DDI assists with their uh, national pavilions and their missions, but then most companies do not have the resources to follow up uh, on this. Mm. Uh, this is what the ISF understands very well. And we have been doing exactly this for, as I say, for the past three decades. We've got to hunt in packs. Mm. We've simply got to work together. We've got to work together in affiliations, JVs, and joining in the wider South African I industry. Mm. And what are some of the ISF's aspirations for its members based on the LNG projects in Mozambique? Well, obviously to maximize our input in the, in the projects. Mm. But maybe I should just look at the split between the short term and the long term. On the short term, we are busy uh, currently with uh, bidding for the first 65,000 tons for the Area 1 under Darko project. We also visited uh, again the uh, Milan in December, and as a result of that, we are, f are now starting the interactions on the pressure equipment for the same project. Mm. And secondly, the uh, Area 4 Ravuma project is also about to kick off, so and we also started our interactions with, with that project. And then thirdly, of course, as I said, is to get our pressure equipment members from South Africa also involved in this project. But on the longer term, if you look at the vast uh, size of these projects, whether it's 50 billion or 200 billion, mm -hmm. as various sources quote, over 10 or 20 years, our longer term objective, firstly, is to get more Mozambican members, mm -hmm to see more South African companies establish themselves in Mozambique or entering into JVs with Mozambican concerns. That is the only way we're going to maximize our input into Mozambique, by seeing this project as a regional project. Mm. And is there anything else from a steel or steel fabrication point of view that you would like to add? Yes, uh, it pays off to have a positive attitude. Uh, in general, perhaps South Africans became the biggest own enemies in terms of uh, securing projects in Africa. Due to the continuous negative press about South Africa and its steel industry, we have convinced many of the people in South Africa and outside South Africa that we no longer have the ca capabilities. Now that's totally untrue. We still have excessive skills in terms of capacity, in terms of capabilities to tackle any large scale project tomorrow anywhere in Africa. So nothing can be further from the truth. Secondly, we have come the full circle and there is a much better understanding today uh, of the difference between tendered price and delivered cost. Mm. So we've really seen the realization by project owners, engineering houses, that the difference between, for example, the South African and the Chinese bids have not only totally re uh, reduced in, in difference, uh, it's a very small difference today, but also that, in fact, the South African project costs are often lower than the Chinese mm -hmm. when you add the costs up at the end of the project. This has caused uh, specifically the Australians to uh, realize the, the benefit of procuring in Africa for Africa and they are demanding more and more of that. In fact they have specifically now requested us to even look at the uh, more accurate required plate work for Australian destinations. Mm -hmm. What I would like to say to these South Africans, don't tolerate negative comments, negative attitudes. Be positive. Mm -hmm. It actually rubs off. It rubs off on our clients and it rubs off on all the South Africans. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you for joining us today Niels. That was the International Steel Fabricator CEO Niels van Niekerk discussing the steel fabrication sector with engineering news.